when they reached Havana, their luck ran out. The Cuban government refused their admission, and for the next week, the frantic passengers vainly sought a port that would allow them entry. Every country in South, in South America refused. The United States' response was even more strict. It sent a gunboat to shadow the St. Louis in case it got close enough to allow the passengers to slip ashore and swim to safety. Only Canada remained. A desperate plea to, a desperate plea to Ottawa for permission to land was promptly rejected. As a top official of the immigration branch explained to the Prime Minister, Mackenzie King, no country can open its doors wide enough to take in the hundreds of thousands of Jews who wish to leave Europe. The line must be drawn somewhere. The line drawn, the passengers' last flickering hope for rescue extinguished. The Jews on the St. Louis were forced back to Europe, where many were killed in the death camps of the Third Reich. Canada arguably had the worst record of any Western nation in accepting Jews attempting to escape the Nazis. As a prominent Jewish leader wrote at the time, the world is divided into two parts, those places where Jews cannot live and those where, ca where they cannot enter. Canada fell into the latter category. The St. Louis symbolizes in its essence the story of the largely unrecognizable Canada of the first half of the 20th century. A benighted, closed, xenophobic society in which minorities were barred from almost every sector of Canadian life. Today's Canada is far different and far better. At a time when intolerance seems to be the growth industry of the 21st century, Canadian governments seem to have learned the lesson of this shameful period of Canadian history. 